This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Welcome to Publishing Poems, Short Stories, and Essays in Literary Magazines by me, Kara Claussen, courtesy of the Eastern Area Public Library. Um, just want everyone to know that uh, I have been published in three genres in several literary magazines, and I'm passionate about the literary magazine industry and hope to share my knowledge with you in case you would like to be published in a literary magazine or several too. Um, before we get started, just a few administrative details. My slides are wordier than they would normally be just because we're doing this virtually. So I want to make sure that everyone has the information um, that they'll need to do this when I'm not here. This session is being recorded, so you can refer back to it, and uh, it will be posted through the library channels. Um, I can send that out to attendees once we've got the information, the link. And if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone and turning off your camera until the end of this, um, when we can unmute for questions and answers, that would be great. Thank you so much. And without further ado, here we go. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I clicked the button, but we'll see. Maybe I need to do it this way. There we go. Okay. So the first thing you have to do if you want to be published in a literary magazine is you need to write something, and it should be something that you feel strongly about, that you feel is good, representative of your best work, that makes you excited and that you believe in. Um, the library offers many helpful writing resources if you need advice on crafting your writing or if you need writing prompts. I've listed just a few of what the, the library offers. Um, some of the names you might be familiar with like Ursula K. Le Guin and Stephen King, and some of them maybe not. Uh, we even have guides for younger writers. Um, everything from fiction to nonfiction to poetry to graphic novels. Uh, you name it, so it's pretty cool. Um, a quick search through our catalog will yield even more results. Um, and if you need any help finding anything, of course, you can always contact Reference Desk. Okay, so the next thing you do after you write something you feel pretty good about is you edit it. <laughs> you have to revise and revise and revise. And if you know other writers or in a writing workshop or a class, that's one great place to start. Um, every time you make a significant revision, you should save a new copy because you never know if uh, the, the most recent draft has something in it that you actually do want. You don't want to cut it forever. Um, so save, save all of your drafts. Um, I recommend dating them in some way so you know what your first one was, your second, your third, your 20th. One way to proofread is to read the piece aloud, just to hear how it sounds. Um, you can listen for gaps. You can also uh, read the piece to somebody and have them listen for any strangeness. And outlining it, I love reverse outlining a piece um, just to see where there are any places where it's not clear how we got from one section to another, you know, where something might need a bridge. That's something to do. Okay, so those, those are some tips. All right, some of you are asking, what even is a literary magazine? I don't I've never heard of that. Who reads these things? <laughs> What, where do you find them? Um, so just, just a little background on lit mags. Um, they publish a variety of things depending on the lit mag. Um, some of them might only focus on poetry, while others might only focus on, for instance, fiction or nonfiction. Many of them publish multiple genres. Um, some go beyond the standard poetry, fiction, and nonfiction to publish graphic narratives, uh, interviews, photographs, artwork. So. Um, they can be a mixed bag. They, you, can, you can find most of them um, living online. Some of them do actually print uh, paper copies 
though that's becoming more of a thing of the past for most literary magazines due to the expense of printing and uh, mailing and all of that. Uh, most of these magazines, they're not raking it in. They survive on subscriptions, grants, and donations. They publish, uh, their frequency of publishing varies. Some of them are monthly, seasonally, tri-quarterly, or biannually. They um, are generally, a lot of them are run by institutions of higher learning, so they're run out of colleges and universities, but many of them are totally unaffiliated. Uh, and some of them will publish big names that you recognize next to authors you've never heard of, uh, which I, I personally like that approach. Hook people with the big names, and then you get exposed to all of these equally awesome authors who just don't have as much of a foundation under them yet. Um, these magazines are usually staffed by unpaid volunteers, but they are experienced readers, um, which is great. Many magazines, you can find some of the content online for free, which is going to come into play when we talk a little bit later. Um, some of them offer contests throughout the year, which those can be fun to enter, but they do, they're usually the fee. And my favorite thing is stocking them on social media. That's where you can generally find out the newest information. Um, on contests or if they're looking for a specific kind of submission or they're telling you like we're going to be opening for submissions next week you can be one of the first people to get your pieces in and you might hear back a little bit faster than you normally would okay moving on all right where do you even how do you even begin to find the world of lit mags well when you're ready when you feel like you've got a piece that is publishable you want to get it out in the world, you want to find the right magazine for it. So what you can do is you can look through a number of databases. Uh, New Pages is one of my favorite ones to look through, um, where you can search by the, the genre. Maybe you wrote a poem and you want to find magazines that accept poetry, for instance. Um, you can do that there. Sometimes they actually list calls for certain uh, kinds of submissions. You know, magazines are looking to fill a niche or a hole in their upcoming magazine issue. And maybe you're, you've got the piece that they need to do that. So you can look for calls for submissions there too. And they even have a specific area for younger authors. Um, Poets and Writers is another place to look and submittable. And we'll be talking about submittable because if you would like to enter this whole lit mag publishing industry, you're going to want to get a submittable account. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. So say you're looking through the database. You find a magazine that publishes what, you know, the kind of thing that you've written. It's poetry. And you're like, this magazine sounds really cool. It has, I don't know, high circulation or it publishes the authors that you really like. Um, now you need to go a little deeper. You need to go to the magazine's web page, for instance, and read their about section and look at the editor's pages, get a sense of the aesthetics of the magazine. Um, are they quirky? Are they serious? Um, do they publish content that you feel good about? Or is it stuff that you're like, I don't I don't want my piece rubbing shoulders with this kind of material. You want to feel good about where you're placing your piece. So definitely do your homework. But you also want to actually have a real shot at getting your piece published with the magazine. So if what you've written sort of is too far astray from the kinds of things the magazine usually puts out there, you might not want to waste your time and sometimes money on submission fees submitting your work there. Um, so another thing to consider is how competitive the market is for that magazine. Um, for instance, The Sun Magazine is a top tier literary magazine. Um, very, very hard to get into. It, they don't accept simultaneous submissions. It might take them seven months to get back to you. And if you've never published anything before, this is your first shot at it that makes it very difficult for you to get placed in the magazine. Not impossible, but definitely a little harder in general. Um, so something to think about. 
Something else is maybe you feel like you have like this Nobel Prize winning <laughs> piece, you know, you're like, this is the best thing I've ever written. It, it really moves the readers. It's profound. I want to make sure that this place is in a magazine that people have heard of. Okay, so you want to stop, start with the top tier magazines. One place to find where the magazines with that, that kind of ranking are is in Clifford Garsting's Perpetual Folly Literary Magazine rankings, which um, he bases on the Pushcart Prize, which is one of the most prestigious prizes you can get as a writer in the lit mag world. And so he ranks, he ranks um, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. So that's one place to go. Erica Krauss has a site that she, she bases on a variety of prizes, um, the circulation of a magazine, the money that the magazine pays, because that's something we haven't talked about, but generally this is not, this is not a paying gig, this whole writing thing in literary magazines. Most of the times you'll be lucky if your payment is a contributor's copy um, that includes the work that you've published. Um, if you're lucky, you might make, they might send you a check for $10 or 20. Um, some of the higher tier magazines will pay more, um, which is nice, but again, it can be challenging to get into those. Uh, John Fox has a couple of lists that are definitely slightly outdated, but still a good spot to check. And Random House has a fiction list that's based on the O. Henry Prize stories, which is another category of honors you can get. Um, so let's see. Okay, and then this, this is something that not too many people have heard about, even in literary world, but I'm aware of it because one of the magazines I published in um, is actually on the Vita account in a positive light. So what is the Vita account? Well, it comes out of this organization called Vita that is, quote, a nonprofit intersectional feminist literary organization dedicated to creating transparency surrounding gender imbalances and the lack of diversity in the literary landscape. Uh, we also work to amplify historically marginalized voices. Essentially, there is a disparity in who gets published. Um, often magazines publish more male identified um, writers than women or non-binary writers. And this is a problem that Vita is trying to make more evident in the hopes that <laughs> showing it will instigate change in the industry. So some of the writing folks I know prefer to publish in magazines that are a little bit more you know thoughtful about who are we publishing and they're trying to be more fair and trying to ensure that at least as many women and more non-binary folks are published in their magazines as men so that is something to look at if that is a concern for you um, okay here's the most boring part of <laughs> submitting to a literary magazine. You know, you poured your heart into this piece. You've tried to make it perfect. You're thinking it should speak for itself. And you know what? For the most part, it does. But most magazines will still ask you to do this <laughs> annoying administrative work of furnishing them with a cover letter. Fortunately, the cover letter is generally very short, succinct, um, to the point you don't really won't have to say much in it. You shouldn't, in fact, say much in it. You should just give them what they're asking for and no more than that. So generally you'll open using the genre editor's name. So say you have a poem, you want to find the poetry editor in the masthead or the about section of the website, if you can find it, right? If you can find the name, you want to find the name. If you can't find the name, that's okay but address the genre, so dear poetry editor, for instance, dear nonfiction editor. Um, don't assume the editor's gender. So say you do find a name and there's no indication of, um, you know, you really just, you wanna kinda do away with Mr., Mrs., or Ms. Um, for the most part. You can use their whole name. Um, 
these are the times we're living in is that these these addresses are too they make too many assumptions and they're slightly too formal but saying you know dear uh henry oldorfer that's fine that's fine at least their name is on there that's what they really appreciate is when you take the time to find their name and familiarize yourself with the magazine um, don't absolutely do not summarize explain or try to sell your submission or butter up the editors they they don't want to they don't want to hear any of that um, they do want to know what the genre of your submission is is this poetry fiction nonfiction what is this they want the title they want the word count because a lot of them have limits on how many words are allowed in their magazine um, they want to know if you have any ties to the magazine, if you know somebody, if maybe you graduated from that university that's running the magazine, anything kind of like that. Um, but again, don't don't try to butter up the editors. Um, just be honest. And uh, many of them will ask for a short bio, um, usually in the third person. Okay, and then you just close with a nice pleasant thank you and a nice closing address uh, you know with your name sometimes you'll include your contact info if it's not already in the a lot of times you're filling out a form and like submittable and um, sometimes they'll ask for the cover letter to be pasted into your actual submission document on like the first page um, that's fairly rare but if they do ask for it you want to make sure that happens all right, so I wrote up a cover letter for Pithead Chapel, just as an example to show you the basics. So um, I've written, Dear Catherine Gihan, which is the, that's the uh, nonfiction editor for Pithead Chapel. So I found her name. Um, please consider my, put the word count in, the genre, the title. Look at that, all that work done in just one sentence. I also say that this is a simultaneous submission. If the magazine lets you put in a simultaneous submission, meaning that you are submitting that piece not only to this magazine, but to other magazines, you wanna tell them, um, and you want to let them know that you will withdraw the piece from this this magazine if it's accepted elsewhere. That is some, uh, I don't know, it's a respectful thing to do. It lets them know you're not gonna waste their time. They're not gonna be sitting there considering a piece that's already been accepted elsewhere. And then just a little third person bio that sort of includes any, um, any publications you have under your belt. If you don't, that's fine. You don't, need, you don't need that. A lot of magazines won't judge you for what publications you have or don't have. Um, if you are earning any sort of MFA, that might be fun to put in there. Um, Maybe you're not, maybe you're just taking, you're taking a, a class or something on creative writing, maybe you wanna mention that. Or maybe you've just been doing your own thing for a while, you can say that. A lot of them um, encourage people to write like one sentence of something that's a little bit more personal about who you are. So I, I made up this person, Erica Larson, and I said she can be found frolicking in the meadows around her house. Just a little personal touch, and then the thank you and a sign off. Okay, so finally, finally, you're like, okay, I wrote up a cover letter, I love the piece that I have, I am ready to hit the submit button. Okay, well you have to go about it the right way because each magazine has a different submission process. Many of them use this submittable.com for processing, processing submissions. The account um, is free, so you can sign up for free, um, which is great. Submittable is great for a number of reasons. Um, you can find different magazines in there. You can find contests in there. Um, you can find internship opportunities and fellowships in Submittable. So I really encourage everyone to sign up and see what's available. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, it costs the magazines money to use Submittable. They have to, they have to pay fees to use it. And because they don't have really any money, most of them, a lot of them will pass on a small fee to us writers. 
So to submit a piece, there's usually a small fee around $2 to $5, a reading, a reading fee that covers the fees uh, for the magazine to use Submittable. Um, what I think of it is, is if you log into Submittable, it tracks all of your submissions for you. And so that's kind of nice for a few dollars. Okay, I know where my piece is in the process. It'll tell me that it's in progress being read or I can see, oh, I submitted a piece to that magazine six months ago. Um, it was rejected. <laughs> or, oh, I need to go in and withdraw a piece. You can do that in Submittable too. So it's fairly handy. Um, and a lot of magazines will include um, two categories for submissions. One, one will be the pay, you pay $3 or something. And another category for like, quote unquote, hard up <laughs> writers who maybe don't have the funds, you know, they're living paycheck to paycheck and it's hard for them to get their writing out there. A lot of them will have a category for free, maybe for the first few days of the month, something like that. Um, so that's also pretty nice. Now, some magazines don't want to pay submittable fees, and they don't want their, you know, potential writers to have to pay fees either. So they'll have their own submission portals on their websites. So that's something to look for. Some magazines ask that you submit via email, which then you have to be careful. You have to check your email, make sure communications aren't going into the trash or the junk folders. And a very few magazines actually refuse electronic submissions and only accept hard copies. Usually it's the other way around. Usually they, they pretty much refuse hard copies and ask that you do everything digitally. Okay, when you submit, you must follow the submission guidelines. They're usually pretty lengthy and detailed and they vary for each magazine. So what you wanna note is, and they'll have a submission page on their website. You wanna note things like, are they even reading right now? Is, this, is their submission period open? Usually magazine, a lot of magazines will only be open for a few months out of the year. Um, so you wanna catch them in the right time. Uh, a lot of them will have word limits on your piece um, or page limits or piece limits. So maybe you have a few poems, they might take three to five poems at a time, that kind of thing. Some of them will allow multiple submissions. You've got an essay and you've got some poetry you wanna put in at the same time. Okay, maybe they'll let you or they'll let you put in two essays if if they don't exceed a certain um, you know word limit so that's kind of nice then your chances of being published by them are increased uh, many will accept simultaneous submissions this is something i've mentioned before but they'll say yes we accept this you know just let us know if you have submitted this piece um, if you have submitted this piece somewhere else and it is accepted somewhere else please let us know and withdraw it you know, as soon as possible. Um, some magazines do not accept simultaneous submissions. Many of the uppermost top echelon magazines, will they do not like that. And so, sure, how are they gonna know if you submit somewhere else? Uh, well, the, the literary world is actually pretty small. So unfortunately, there's a good chance they'll find out and you might be sort of like, blacklisted from that magazine going forward. I would, I would advise against um, breaking the rules. So it's something to think about. You wanna check your line spacing. Sometimes margin size is a thing. A lot of times with the line spacing, they want double spaced. And a lot of times with the margin size, they want at least one inch or larger because what they might do is print out your writing if they really like it and make notes in the side um, in the margins. So. Um, try to do as they ask. Uh, they might ask for your contact info um, on the first page of your submission, or they might say, do not put your name. We don't want to know anything about you. No identifying information. We want to read this as blindly as possible so that our magazine, we're not biased in any way, and we keep it as diverse as possible. Um, so again, check that. File formats. Some say we'll only accept dot dot or dot docx, no PDF files, um, that kind of thing. So definitely ensure you get the right file format. Otherwise, you might just be throwing your money away. You pay $3 to submit, and they're not even going to open your piece because it's not in the acceptable file format. Turnaround time. Maybe you're really eager. You're like, I want to I wanna get this piece out here and publish right away. Um, let's get it done. Well, 
most magazines will tell you, hey, it's probably going to take us around three months. Some will tell you sooner. They'll be like, you will know whether we're going to take this piece within two weeks. Wow. And some, it's like a year. So really check that out and, you know, look at the fees too. There is one magazine out there. I'm not going to name names, but it's notorious for charging like $23 for a submission. Uh, yeah, a lot of writers don't feel good about that. Um, but like I said, most magazines, it's just a few dollars. Okay, moving on. All right. I'm a stickler for staying organized. And if you actually start to really dive into this and crank out a lot of writing, you're going to want to stay organized too. So maintain some kind of a file folder system on a computer or USB drive if possible, um, where you can track like all your pieces, all of your different draft versions, where you've submitted, when you submitted. You're probably going to submit to the same magazines through the years because you really like them or that's the kind of writing you do um, or you've been rejected, but you're like, this is my golden <laughs> magazine. I'm going to get in here someday. Um, keep track of what you're submitting so you don't submit, you know, accidentally submit the same thing. You don't waste your time um, and you don't waste their time and money and all of that. So I like to maintain a log and a spreadsheet um, where I've got things going on because like I said, Submittable has a really great section where you can look to see where all your pieces are. Um, but not every magazine uses Submittable. So if you want to see, if you want a spot where you can see where everything is, I suggest making some kind of, you know, Excel document or other kind of spreadsheet um, that includes things like title, the version of the title of your piece, the version, genre, the magazine name where you submitted, the date you submitted, whether or not, you know, it's a simultaneous submission. You've got it kicking around different magazines and its current status. All right, you have submitted, you press the button, yay. You're sweating, maybe you're having a drink because it's really hard to hit that submit button. I mean, now your baby's out there and who knows, right? Who knows what's gonna happen to it. So you wait, you wait, you, may wait. you might wait days, weeks, or more commonly months for a response. Um, don't pester the magazine. Um, some, if the magazine does list a window of time on their website where they say, we'll get back to you likely within this amount of time, and it has passed that window, then and maybe only then might you write them and be really respectful about it. Just say, hey, I know your website. On your website, it says you generally get back to folks in 12 weeks. You know, um, It's been 14 weeks, and I just was wanted to inquire about the status, you know. Um, thank you so much again for considering my work. Okay, that just alleviates any fears you have that maybe somehow your piece like dropped through the cracks, right? Um, it's just that way you'll, you'll know that they know that you're a little bit concerned. And this way, maybe if it did drop through the cracks, they can get back to you. Um, and if it didn't, or they just forgot to like push a button and submittable, you know, then they're on it and they're grateful that you let them know. So it can work out. But unfortunately, most of the times it's just, they're not done yet. They're, they're busy. They're reading tons and tons of submissions all the time. So, all right. Unfortunately, rejection is going to happen, but it's not the end of the world. So you will get, you will see form rejections where just everybody and their brother and mother and sister are getting the same rejection, doesn't have your name on it, doesn't say anything special. It's just like, sorry, this is, your piece is not a fit for us at this time. Thank you. And you're like, okay. Personalized rejections are actually sort of like badges of honor in the literary world. Um, in these, you can tell the editor read your piece, they're talking directly to you, and they might tell you like that your piece made it through many rounds, a lot of people appreciated this, that, and the other thing about it, uh, but it didn't quite work for their upcoming issue, or it didn't quite work because it was too large um, in terms of its themes, or something along those lines. And they might, if you're very lucky, they might say, hey, we would love to see more of your work, please keep sending us things to consider. Wow, um, awesome, do it. Do listen to them and let them know next time when you write them, say, hey, I submitted this piece 
back in whenever. And um, I was so grateful for the personalized rejection, like thank you, and for the encouragement to resubmit. Here's a piece that I think might fit a little bit better, you know? So that's good. All right, when you're rejected, you gotta console yourself, you know, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a nice warm bath or something, eat a brownie, I don't know, but you have to do some like self-soothing because it's rough to put your work out there and feel like it wasn't the right fit or wasn't seen. So um, remember that magazines decline perfectly wonderful submissions all the time. So it's not necessarily that there was something like wrong with your piece. Um, it's probably that it just wasn't going to work at this time for that particular venue. So celebrate yourself because if you get rejected, it means you put your work out there, right? Um, that's important. Review your submission again, just to make sure that it wasn't like some glaring like typo or embarrassing something on like page one where you're, <laughs> you're like, oh, maybe that's it, that typo in the first sentence that probably just threw this thing into the slush pile, right? So just be careful with that. Um, you might even set the piece aside if, if you start to rack up the rejections on it. Um, maybe it's 20 rejections in, which is possible and not actually um, rare. People get, generally can go through a lot of rejections on a piece. So if you're like 20 rejections in and you're like, oh my gosh, is this ever gonna get published? Yeah, you might look at it again with fresh eyes and see if maybe you want to change something. Start a new draft and see. But maybe it really is you're like, no, I feel strongly about this. This piece is just the way I want it. Good. Carry on. I know people who have gotten pieces accepted for publication after like 45 rejections and in like top tier magazines or they've won contests with pieces that have been rejected from tons of places. So it's sort of sort of almost like a crapshoot sometimes, you never know. Um, and when you're ready, you know, submit again, just keep going. All right, what you should not do is write the editors back asking why your piece wasn't accepted. That's not appreciated by them. They don't have time, they don't have time for that. If, if they did, they wouldn't send like a form rejection, right? Um, so don't complain about the magazine to the editors or on social media like i said it's a small world out there you do not want to burn any bridges trust that these magazines are doing the best they can there are some magazines out there that may not have the best reputations and you can hear about them but if i were you i wouldn't be one of the people talking about their bad reputation you see what i'm saying so don't insult the editors and don't stop writing. Uh, keep going. Okay, at some point, you're gonna get accepted. It's gonna be awesome. Your piece is gonna be like offered up a deal, celebrate. Um, sometimes the editors will accept your work as is. They're like, this is great. We wanna publish it just the way that it is. And you're like, amazing, so happy. Sometimes they'll be like, hey, we have a few minor requests and you're like nervous about it probably. Like what, what do they wanna change? Can I even, do I have the ability to make the changes they're gonna ask me for? All that, well, take a deep breath, open their, their email or the document with the feedback on it, look at it. And I've gone through this process and actually one time I was like, wow, these changes are really legitimate. Um, some of them required more work than others. I put the work in because I, I really respected the magazine. I wanted it. I wanted this piece in that magazine. Um, some of the changes they requested I didn't agree with. I, I negotiated. I explained why I wanted to like keep a line. I want to keep this in here because. And the editors were like, you know what? You're right. Great. Let's keep that in there. So it is still your work. And if the editors request changes that you do not, you're like, I can't, I don't want to change the piece in that radical of a way. I don't want to do that. And they're like, well, that's the only way we're, we're going to publish this piece. Really think carefully. Is it worth it to you to do that to your piece? You might just want to say no. You might want to say thank you so much. I think I'm going to decline the offer and I'm going to look elsewhere for a home for this piece as it is. That, that's your power there. Um, 
Also, do not agree to publication until you've read the contract and agreed to the terms. There will be some kind of a contract if this is an up and up magazine. Um, and be aware that your piece may not be published right away. For instance, I have, I had an essay accepted in October of last year, so it's been almost a year, and um, it hasn't been published yet, and I still don't know when it will be published. The magazine only publishes twice a year. They're gonna publish sometime in the fall. I don't know if my piece will be in it. I don't know if my piece will be in the spring published in the spring of 2021 or beyond, I don't know. So uh, sometimes you have to be patient and if you're not willing to wait, if you're like, whoa, wait a minute, you're not gonna be publishing this anytime in the next you know, year, um, you might wanna consider taking it out of that, that magazine's hands too. But again, if you think you found the right home, you might wanna stick with it. All right, what about that contract I mentioned? The contract outlines the rights you're granting to the magazine. Uh, most magazines take only first serial rights and non-exclusive electronic archival rights, which means the rights to republish the work elsewhere um, will revert to you. So that's what you want. If they say, we're just, we would just want first serial rights, okay, cool. That means after that, you can publish your piece in your own book, for instance, later as long as you give a nod to the magazine. Um, a magazine may request exclusive rights for a limited time, meaning you may not republish the work elsewhere during that period. They might say, hey, for the first three months after we publish this, this piece, we don't want to see it republished in any sort of anthology. We don't want to see it in the book that you're putting together. Uh, we want to be exclusively the only ones who have this piece out there for a bit, which makes sense, right? So um, you want to honor that contract. It is not recommended that you grant a magazine or a publisher all of your rights. Beware, there are some magazines out there that are a little bit vultury. If they take all of your rights, you can't, you can't publish in a book without renegotiating the contract, essentially. And they might say no. They might say no, you can't have your piece back, even though you wrote it. So be careful. Um, Poets and Writers has a great uh, page about copyright info that I put the link to right there. Do not, do not agree to any, con don't sign anything unless you agree with it. This is your writing, you pour your heart into it. Okay, so sometimes you have a piece accepted, yay, but that piece is floating around at one or two or even more magazines. Um, it's being considered elsewhere because you submitted simultaneously. You need to go and you need to tell every one of those magazines once you've decided you know, you, you're good with where you want this thing published, it's been accepted. You need to go tell these other magazines, hey, that's this is not up for consideration at your magazine anymore. A lot of the times you can do that in Submittable just by pressing, there's like a button that you press and it will withdraw the piece from the magazine and that's all you need to do. But if it was an emailed piece or you went in through the website, the magazine's personal portal, there's probably gonna be a different way. You're gonna have to write them an email you're gonna have to follow their protocol for withdrawal. Don't wait. As soon as this, you feel good about where your piece is gonna be placed, you need to go tell these magazines so you're not wasting their time. Um, also, I've seen people try to do this. This doesn't feel good. If, you're, if you were hoping that a different magazine would accept your work before the one that did, don't be like trying to strike deals like, oh, hey, accepting magazine, will you wait until this other magazine that I like better lets me know if they're gonna publish the piece? That's not okay, that's disrespectful. So. Please don't do that. You're gonna burn some bridges if you do that with probably both, both those magazines. Okay. What? All right, moving on to the next slide, slowly but surely. Okay, track your publications. All right, you're starting to be, you're starting to rack them up, right? You're putting your work out there. That means lots of rejections, lots of acceptances, hopefully. <laughs> so you wanna maintain a list of publication details, and that can be in that log, but if you wanna make sure that it's easy to find all of those details, um, you might start a, a separate document somewhere. Um, this is because you might want to publish those pieces in a collection or a book 
someday. You might want to have them included in an anthology somewhere. You need to know where they were published first so you can say this is where it was first published. Um, you want to keep copies of any contracts and if you, um, oh yes, okay, we covered that already, but yes, definitely track your publications. Um, you might even track them on like if you keep an author's website. If you start to get to that point where you're like, hey, I'm really digging this. I want to have a website that showcases all of my work. Uh, yeah, now you've got this list you can throw on there. People can like look up your work and see what you're about. Okay, this is just frosting and sprinkles on top of the whole publishing deal. So there are awards and honors that can come with publishing in lit mags. Many literary magazines will nominate the pieces they publish for honors. So they'll look to see what are our best, you know, essays that we published this year. Let's nominate a couple of them for the Best American series or the Pushcart Prize. Um, if the magazine only publishes online and doesn't have a print issue, they might uh, nominate pieces for Best of the Net. Um, and the o, o. Henry Prize stories is just for fiction, but Best American Series does nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. The Pushcar Prize, uh, I believe, does all three genres. Best of the Net, same. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, clicking through. Summary, here we go. So obviously you gotta write something you love. You need to edit it, feel good about it. Find a lit mag that fits your piece, not the other way around. Write a good cover letter, make a copy of the piece you'd like to submit, updating it to meet the mag's guidelines, file it appropriately. Then submit your writing. Be ready to receive some kind of rejection or an offer. Be ready to decline an offer. Be ready to withdraw a piece. You gotta be ready for it all. And you wanna track all of your progress and publications. And then keep going, it's a cycle. Just keep going, don't give up because your voice is important. People wanna read your work. Okay, so now we're at the questions um, part of this. Let's go back, I'm gonna go back to our meeting. And if you would like to unmute yourself so I can hear your questions if you have them. There's also a little chat feature you could type in your questions for me, so that could work. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Carol, and congratulations on being published. I didn't know that you were. Oh, yeah, thank you, yes. That's awesome. Um, uh, and yeah, it, it sounds like it's pretty consistent when I was last submitting or considering submitting to literary yeah. magazines? It hasn't, it hasn't changed much, I don't think, in the past few years. I mean, just more magazines are going digital, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering how that had affected it at all in the submission process. It sounds kind of similar, a little bit different, to submitting to try to get a literary agent. Yeah, that's a whole... <laughs> <laughs> just kind of a process. <laughs> it's a pro yeah, <laughs> it's a process. But it was, you know, it's interesting to learn about submittable and like more of the the way digitally it's gotten easier to kind of do things in a really organized, like simultaneous matter of submission. Yes. That's so much easier than when it was all hard copy stuff. That's I remember that. No, that's another thing. You're right. I, I didn't think about, but with submittable, when you're paying a few dollars to submit, it's like you were going to pay that back in the day to print yeah. out the material and then send it in an envelope, especially with the rising cost of mailing and then having to wait and put in your self addressed stamped envelope and oh, yeah. <laughs> all of that. So I've still I, got all my, my stuff in a box somewhere with all my rejection letters. But yeah, it's, it's so, uh, you know, I haven't really submit to literary magazines. I remember the cost of having to subscribe to mm -hmm. submit being prohibitive. Um, but it, it sounds so similar to when I was trying to, uh, to get an agent the first time around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true too. And now a lot of times with submitting to agents, if you've got like a book length work, uh, I think it's a little bit deeper now. Yeah. 
you usually have to provide a, a summary. Yeah. A synopsis. Uh, a synopsis and a summary. I remember it was a summary and then a three page synopsis or a 10 page synopsis. Like it was all these different. Yeah. <laughs> Something. That's what I like about lit mags. They're like, we don't even want a one sentence. Like, please don't. <laughs> Unless it's the New York Times or whatever, then they might want to pitch. And right. okay, but generally they're not even going to listen to you if you're just Joe Schmo off the street. That sounds, that sounds so efficient and so nice. You can just fire everything off. Versus having a, it's almost like, I don't know, if you're planning a reception or something at your RCP, you save the day, like all these different things that you have to like have in one envelope to submit over and everybody wants something different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's for me, it's an endeavor, this whole submitting process. I usually only have a piece out under consideration on like two to three magazines at a time, just because for me, the administrative process is so tedious but I'm like, look, um, and I, I can't I, believe yeah you know, if you do the research and you're like look my piece feels like it's a good fit for these magazines hopefully you don't have to submit to more than a few places right I'm on I'm on Twitter a lot of writers are on Twitter p.s. if anybody's looking for writing community all all of us nerds we are on twitter and we are following each other and amplifying each other's you know work and voices and all the lit mags are on there too um so that's great i forget where i was going with this but um go to <laughs> <laughs> find a <your> support system <laughs> find your support system yeah so important and then yeah. um back when i I first learned about the process in school. At the time, some literary magazines would take excerpts from novels. It was very rare. Does that ever happen anymore? You know, it does. Some of the magazines will yeah. take, but most of them will say, you know, we will look at a chapter of a work if it is self-contained. Right. And you would, you would want to say that in your uh, cover letter. You know, here is a self-contained chapter from my book my upcoming, <laughs> my work in progress. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and obviously, I think it maybe causes them to hesitate for a moment. Like, is it? Yeah. It's no, understandable. I did that recently, actually. I sent out a piece and I was like, it's self-contained. But, you know, I got a, I got a personalized rejection from oh. this time magazine and they were like, this was so good, but also we could, you, you probably couldn't <laughs> up enough of the ends for a self contained you know and they said yeah. send work and I said awesome that's what that's, like green magazine responding to me personally I will take it <laughs> that's great I mean the next best thing to an acceptance right is just that little bit of you know validation exactly so that's awesome congratulations on that <laughs> thank you thank you I know still floating on it while receiving rejections everywhere yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah I think the best one I ever got was more or less a form one and just just a handwritten note on it that just said I'm so sorry I would really love to take you on I'm so sorry like it was a handwritten note on a rejection which is something that is that's awesome I would put that in a frame here it is someone's handwritten <laughs> that's so rare I do but I'm not gonna frame it <laughs> but it was yeah it's it's uh it was nice <laughs> yeah it's nice Wow. Yeah. So um, are you thinking about submitting any of your chapters? You know what? I don't know if I would submit any chapters of this one. I kind of just want this to be what it is. And then I'm I'm still, I don't know if I'm going to seek out, you know, independent publishers or just do it myself and then move on. Mm -hmm. But it definitely got me thinking about, like, could I start getting back to shorter fiction in that process? Because that's not something I usually do. Yeah. Um, and then just try it because it sounds like it's gotten to be such a straightforward process digitally compared to how I remember it, which was you had to subscribe and you had to, you know, you had to drop everything in the mailbox and everything. Right. And just that, I mean, forget the cost of mail, even just printer cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I know. It's, I, it just felt like it would just turn into such a stack. And, uh, yeah, I, I also... I'm curious as to what you would think about this. I don't know how much you would know. 
um, if you when you write that little summary about yourself that you would ordinar or ordinarily say like, hey, I've been published in XYZ or I normally do this, I wonder if it'd be worth mentioning like, hey, I work as a content writer nine to five. <laughs> Yeah. But I, I like writing about things I actually care about, but I do write all day. Like, I have to wonder, you know, if that makes you seem like you're easier to work with because you're used to clients complaining about, like, oh, I want this sentence gone or I want this fleshed out more or whatever. Like, you're you're so used to that process, so you're easy to work with. It is um, interesting. You kind of, like, imply a question of what even – what is this bio for? Are we trying to, like, impress yeah. editors? Are we – is this – we're trying to impress the publications readers. What are we doing here with this? And um, I've noticed it does seem to vary from magazine to magazine. Right. Some, you know, even like these top tier writers will just have like, they won't even mention any of their publications. They'll just be like, you know, Stephen King likes sipping coffee with his dogs in Maine. <laughs> and Maine. You know, um, in fact, so I'm looking at um, the contributors list of the latest issue of the Sun Literary Magazine, and um, one of them just says, where is it? Tracy Frisch settled in rural upstate New York in 2004, trading in a job to build a house, grow large gardens, and participate in the gift economy. That's it. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> about any prior publications or education or anything like that and uh, uh, I was more wondering if they use that little line of your bio to somehow discern if you are serious enough or productive perfect. enough not so much that it's something they would necessarily put that line in the magazine at, you right. know verbatim but just something they would use to like kind of evaluate like okay this person produces or I don't so know some of the magazines I feel like they are doing that they're and I don't, I want to say the ones that are a little bit more traditional, you would know by reading some of their works, like, oh, this is very, I want to say, not. they're like usually not very experimental, and they might like pride themselves on the number of times they've been in Best American, you know, essays or whatever, and they might be looking. I really super appreciate the magazines where they're like, we're, yeah, include your bio in case you get published, but we're not even looking at it. We're not, oh, looking, yeah. we're not looking at any of that junk before we read your piece because we don't want to know. We want to read this solely on the merits of your craft. That's mm -hmm. kind of nice in a way, you know, that's not refreshing. You are what you've done. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, I like that the best, but you're right. We don't really know. Once you put your bio together, you don't, you don't know um, unless they say they're going to read it bluntly. You don't know what they're doing with that, whether they're using it in some way for or against you. Mm -hmm. So make sure you want to see it in print, potentially. Mm -hmm. So I do like to look at a magazine's bios, like the bios of people who have already been published there to see, like, what are they talking about in their bios? I want to make sure yeah. it resonates with with the content there yeah cool interesting stuff yeah. <laughs> well do you have any more do you have any more questions about lit mags i'm sure i had a few like and i was trying to remember them during i was writing them down a bit and i, I think i covered all of them but um yeah it's it's I, I don't know. Have you um have you had any agents contact you, or do you know if agents are still using literary magazines to kind of? I know they're you know for the most part now everybody's you know the, the public. It's such a small community, but people are trying to submit more than ever. Yeah. And so agents are always like kind of inundated. And so I don't know if they're at, like how many are like actively rely on literary magazines to go. Okay, this person's up and coming, and might contact you. I have heard that there are agents that that do that um i think your chances are much improved if you are nominated for one of those awards i was talking about as the push card best american that kind of thing and of course even exponentially improved if your piece is actually selected for publication in one of those venues um i did one of the um magazines where I published last year, the editors just wrote me the other day and they said, hey, is it okay we gave your contact information to this other magazine that read your work here and they are thinking about soliciting you for a piece of work. And I was like, what? Uh -huh. It was awesome. 
I have not heard from them yet, but maybe they're looking at me for the future. Anyway, I, I was like, this is great. So it seems like at least the magazines are looking at each other and where some writers we want in our, you know, in our publication. So that's, that's pretty cool. Right? How, do you not, <laughs> how do you not just wait by your phone or your email all day when you get something like oh. that going oh, on? <laughs> in the morning and I'm like, did they write me yet? <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> <need> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it would drive me crazy. But congratulations. That is really, really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I do think like the more that you put out there, you know, the more that you can put out there. But like I said, you want to be proud of what you are putting out there. Um, yeah. Because then once it's out there too, I mean, it's out there unless the magazine folds, which unfortunately is a possibility. Right. And in right. that case, your work can be lost. A lot of magazines won't accept reprint. You know, you already gave away your first rights and a lot of magazines won't. They'll say, even if the magazine folded, we don't want to republish you know, your work. So there are a handful out there that will. You just let them know this magazine folded, but I... <laughs> God, yeah. God, it's such a, isn't it all just all so much business versus, you know. <laughs> it is. I, that's part of the thing. That's unfortunately one of the things that I look for when I'm sending my work out, even though I'd love to sort of help some of these like new magazines, because new magazines are happening every year or two. They're like, oh, here we are. If they're kind of fledgling magazines, I avoid just because my ego can't, I can't handle it. Like if a magazine folds in three years because they don't have much of a foundation, I feel like my piece is like lost in the void. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of pieces floating around in the void. <laughs> so, but a lot of well, it's okay. They're not that, you know, some people aren't overly attached, but maybe because of the nonfiction nature of it, I'm like, I can't. <laughs> That's a piece of my life that I'm <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I would love to say, oh, it's just fiction. It's fine. It didn't really happen. But your heart's it's still in it, man. You had, to, you had to make all that stuff up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's ever easy. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, wow! Thanks for thanks for coming to the this session. Thank you so much, Carol. This is really, really you've got me considering things where I thought, all right, I'll learn a little bit more about this. But I was like, I don't know if I would ever do it. But I was like, no, maybe at least now I know where to start and the exactly. websites and everything. Like and this is awesome. Thank you so much for having. Yeah. Me. No problem. And if you don't have a submittable account, like I said, get in there because maybe you want to apply for a fellowship or something. Have somebody pay you to do your writing. You know. <laughs> Besides the nine to five stuff, that would be that would be <laughs> at least a breath of fresh air. But um, but no. And then I do have to. I have my uh, my novel's Twitter handle. I have to get, you know, yeah. I have to get that active again and get back into that. And I really, I gotta catch up on your work too. You know. Oh, yeah, I have a I I have a page out there. I'll probably keep it going because it's not too costly every year to keep it going, and it inspires me. I'm like, look, you're paying for this page. Better get some publications put on it, some incentive to put the work out there. But also, I, I would love to work, uh, look at the pieces you've published too. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm sure. No, there's um, I can you know send you the link to the page. Can... Send me some link. I'll 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 uh, I'll subscribe or whatever I need to do for that issue. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, most of it's free, which is great. So. Oh, that's awesome too. But <laughs> anyway, I can support. <laughs> cool. With whatever things I can offer. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I'll I'll ask you about yours too. And if you have any, you know, more questions about lip mags or anything, you know where to find me. Thank you so much, Carol, for coming. Oh, my pleasure. I'll talk All to right. you soon. Talk soon. All right, sounds good. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.